Okay, this next feature I'm gonna show you is how you can put a little click to call or click to SMS widget on your website. So um, let's uh, open up a website that, that I've created a demo for this site, uh, for this, um, this, uh, this video. So let's say you got this web page and um, you see down in the corner here, there's this little persistent widget with our image on it here. If I click on that, if a user clicks on that, they can request that somebody send them a text message right now, a salesperson, or a phone call. So that's a cool little thing. Um, and I'll show you here in our software how we set those up. So from your dashboard, you're gonna uh, navigate to the widgets menu here on the left-hand navigation. And here's the widget that I created. You could click add new widget to begin a new one but uh, I've already created one. I'm gonna uh, show you the settings that I used to create it. So step one is where most of this input's gonna go in. Uh, the very first field here is to upload a logo. You can click on the choose file button and then on your um, computer's file system you can locate an image file. Uh, this is the one that I used, tier five. Um, does need to be greater than 78 pixels, uh, both in height and width. Uh, for the, the widget that I created, this is it right here. This is where it shows up. So this, is, um, this image is, is uh, the one that we use for the closed version of the widget, but once they open it, uh, whatever shows up in here in this circle is determined by the file that, that you upload. <clears throat> The next thing is the domain that you want this widget to show up on. So for this demo, I created a website called blastfunnels.com. Um, and so this widget will only show up on the URL that is entered here. The description is just a block of text, can be anything you want, and the, way, the place where it displays is right here. So everything that you read here um, is taken straight from the input that I put right here. And then the next field we're asking for is the, num the, the users that are going to get um, uh, contacted. So typically you're going to put a, a widget like this on your website so that you know, new prospects can get uh, shunted straight over to your sales team. So when I click on the users, um, there's another video in this series that shows you how to set up users, but I've got a salesman called Craig Closer. And so if, if I had more than one, if I had multiple users, you could, you could select Craig as well as any of these other salespeople or indeed all of them using the select all button. I've only got one user created on this account, but uh, I'm going to select him, going to select Craig. And then um, you have your option of either showing just the, the form for sending a call, just the form for sending an SMS, or what we recommend is both a call and SMS form. That way, you've got both of these two tabs here, which gives your users, you know, the the most the the um, the maximum number of uh, platforms to reach you on. Um, so I've selected both. Now these next two fields are for the benefit of Craig, Craig Closer. This is to give him a little bit of context, a little heads up what this incoming call that he's getting is. So um, if somebody requests a call, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dial first the lead um, in you know whatever phone number that they enter here as their phone number. We're gonna call the lead, and then once they pick up, we're gonna dial Craig on his actual cell phone. Um, when I set up this user, Craig Closer, I put in his cell phone number, the, the mobile device that he keeps in his pocket, and I entered his email address, and I assigned him one of our business lines. In this case, it was the sales line. And then, um, so what our system is doing is it's first dialing the lead, and then when they pick up, we're also gonna dial Craig, and we're gonna play this audio for Craig so he knows what the heck this phone call is about. So you can use this record button and just speak a couple of seconds into your, your microphone and say something along the lines of uh, you know an incoming lead from, and name the website so Craig knows what's going on. So here's my audio. I'll uh, turn up my volume here and play it for you. You've got a new incoming lead from blastfunnels.com. 
So straightforward. Um, and then down here in this field, it's basically the same thing. This is what's going to get sent to Craig when the lead opts instead uh, for an SMS. So uh, when the, you know somebody requests to be uh, texted back, um, Craig's going to get you know incoming lead from the website, and it's going to then have the person's you know um, a link. You'll see that a little bit later in this video. So this is just to provide some context to your agent, to Craig. Um, the next pull down is um, uh, the call procedure. So if you had more than one users, you could opt to either call them all at once, which is what we recommend, or to call them sequentially one after the other. But I'm going to leave it here at the recommended setting of call all at once. Um, the SMS notification as well as the email notification, these are used if your agent, if Craig drops the ball and doesn't answer his phone, if he misses that text for some reason, if his phone is off, um, et cetera, et cetera, you can put a fallback number in here. You can put the boss's number in here and then enable it so that uh, this person, this phone number that's put in this field is going to get the text message. Uh, or in, indeed, you could put an email address in here and enable that with this little switch. <clears throat> Default country just means that the uh, prefix um, that you want to use. So I've kept it at the United States. Um, these final two are for branding purposes, the powered by image and URL. Uh, the image is kind of small, you know, uh, it should be less than 50 pixels wide by, 50, by 34 tall. And uh, you can see it here, down here in the bottom. You know, I just used the tier 5 logo, just like I did up top, except I used it much smaller and, and uh, probably could have resized it even shorter now that I see the alignment of it. But uh, yeah, that's just a little, little vanity touch, I suppose. And of course, the URL that when the user clicks on that Powered By logo, what's it going to open? And I put google.com. Um, so after you've set all of these, um, you're going to hit next, and we're going to bring up your schedule. So what hours and what days is your, uh, uh, your sales team available to make these phone calls and text messages? So you start off by choosing a time zone. Uh, I just put Eastern Standard here because it's what I think in. <clears throat> and I've enabled it for all seven of these days. You know, they're all green, they're all turned on. And I've put it for basically 24 7, you know, from 12 a.m. to 11.59. And you've got pull downs on, on all 14 of these boxes to choose from. So once you've determined what hours um, you want that widget to be available, uh, you click on the next button and now you can determine whether you want this to show uh, either on just the desktop just the mobile or as you see here I've set it to to display on both desktop and mobile versions of the site um, but you could disable one or indeed I guess both if you wanted to I'll click on next and this is the final um, piece of text. It's a one line piece of code that you need to now install on your website. So uh, I'll copy that. And over on my website, I built it over here in ClickFunnels. So if, uh, if you were a ClickFunnels user, you'd do it up here in the settings. But however your web page is built, um, you want to go into the code. And the best place to put it is in the footer text. So uh, that would be right before the close body tag if you were looking at the, uh, the straight uh, code for it. But uh, uh, with a modern page builder, this is where I would uh, paste it here in the body tracking code, save that page. And, um, and then when you reload, <coughs> our widget will appear here in uh, the corner of your page. And then you want to hit save. And you will see here that it's got a um, an activation button. You can turn it off. You can turn it on. And um, if I turn it off, and if I reload this web page, blastfunnels.com, it will disappear. So it's no longer available. And then, of course, if I reactivate it and reload that page, there we go. We've reappeared. So if we want to demonstrate how an actual website visitor uh, to your page would use this box, they would click on our little website widget and then you know choose whether they want an SMS or a phone call. Uh, enter in their phone number. So I just put 
any old fake number in there. Um, and uh, you know, optionally set the date that they want this thing to go through uh, and hit submit request. And it would tell them, thank you for showing interest in our platform. We'll call you back at that specified time. So the system will automatically at that time make that phone bridge. Um, and then uh, uh, should they want to uh, actually get an SMS, they can do the same thing on this tab. And I'll put in a slightly different number, let's say 91, and uh, submit that SMS. And it's going to thank them and let them know that you're going to get an SMS, a text message, shortly. Um, <clears throat> so um, let's find out how this is going to look uh, on the back end of things. Um, so right now we are logged in, you can see, as the, uh, the administrator. That's what I used to create this widget. But if I open up a, um, uh, what do you call it, incognito window, and I log in as my salesperson, Craig, and we'll, uh, we'll show you what he's going to see. So over in here, let's look in his SMS log. OK, uh, you'll see here the most recent SMS from uh, the, the phone number, you know, area 123-456-7891. It's going to let him know that he's got an incoming lead from blastfunnels.com. And here's the phone number of the person who who submitted this thing on the on the, the user who submitted it, or rather the visitor to his website. And then it's also going to give this link, because typically uh, Craig is not going to be at his desktop like we are right now when he receives this. Uh, instead, he's likely going to be on his cell phone. So if I you know just copy this link here, open it in a new tab, all right, and. Um, because he's likely to be on his mobile, I'm going to switch over here to the mobile view of things. And he's going to see a page like this, you know, like this. And he can either start typing away with his response. Um, uh, clicking the widget. How can I help you? And there, his message will then get sent off to that website user, his reply. And um, uh, indeed, he also could click on this button to actually initiate a phone call with this person. So uh, I'll switch back to desktop mode here. <coughs> um, now, one thing that you could do, I'll, uh, I'll close the incognito window and go back to my administrator. Let's say you wanted to give uh, your sales team a little bit of a leg up so that you know the, the website user isn't sitting around waiting for Craig's uh, slow response. You could actually set your autoresponder to immediately send that very first reply, which is a pretty good practice. Um, and all you got to do is go in here to the initial settings that you put here. And on that SMS content, uh, what did I just scrolled right past it, didn't I? Down here at the bottom, um, I'm going to copy that so that whenever, uh, and, and I'm going to now go over to my autoresponder, which you can find up, out all about in an earlier video in the series. And uh, I've got some keywords already set up, but if I add a new keyword, and put paste in that exact string that we used in our autoresponder. We can type in here what the um, immediate response that they should receive is. Something like, hey, you just requested um, a text message from blastfunnels.com. How can I help you? And save that response to the autoresponder. And now, as always, we got to make sure that this autoresponder is configured onto, I see right now it's configured onto the training demo 
uh, or it is the twinning demo autoresponder, but uh, Craig, as you know, um, is uh, a, a, a user on the sales demo line, not the training demo line. He's on this sales one. So I'm going to configure the sales demo line so that it uh, gets an auto response. And I'm going to choose, yes, training demo responder. So everything looks good here. So now, as you can see here from our autoresponder, whenever we get one of these website-based um, uh, leads, whenever somebody clicks on our widget and uh, it requests an SMS and it fires off this, uh, this notification to Craig, to our salesperson, um, the autoresponder is automatically going to send the very first message, the first response over to the lead, um, just getting the conversation rolling. Uh, on Craig's behalf and uh, just providing a slightly better user experience for that incoming web lead. So a couple of other um, features that the, um, uh, uh, the widgets have. If I went back here <clears throat> and edited it and uh, uh, scrolled or uh, paged over to the schedule, let's imagine that uh, our business was closed uh, except on Wednesdays and Thursdays um, from uh, noon to 6 p.m., 8 a.m., why not? So if we actually used this uh, scheduling feature and I put in some hours here that are um, you know outside of the current window right now as I record, so I'll save that so we're only open on two days a week that currently don't include this current moment that I record in so my website widget after I save this uh, um, will now register that I'm closed so I'll come over here and refresh the page now when someone clicks on this and they want to enter in their phone number you know etc cetera, etc cetera, they're only going to be presented with dates that uh, I've uh, populated over here to uh, um, to be open. So this is Wednesday and Thursday, and all these other dates are closed. Um, likewise, I think I uh, mentioned, but you need not um, show both the call and SMS forms. You can have only one or the other. So if I were to do that <coughs> and click through these. All right, reload this once more. Now I'm only being displayed the SMS now. There's no option for them to call you. Um, so that's a nice little feature. Uh, and then one more thing I want to show you over here in the, um, the left-hand navigation. If you look in the lists, you'll see that a new list was created for the website that is specified here in the domain. So if I open up the blastfunnels.com list, you're going to see all of the different leads that uh, in the last few minutes I used in clicking and submitting something. That way you can uh, continue to follow up with these folks, um, add them to campaigns, um, or individually send them messages. And so that's how our click-to-call widget feature works.